Here in the depths of the cellular space, we can see the nucleus and the ribosomes. This is where RNA processing will take place. In eukaryotes, before the mRNA transcripts can be used for protein synthesis, it must undergo processing. The transcript is modified in the nucleus during and shortly after transcription. The modifications include the addition of a methylated cap at the 5' prime end and addition of a poly-A tail at the 3' prime end. First we will look at the first part of processing, modification of the 5' prime end. Processing begins with transcription. RNA polymerase begins transcription at the 5' prime end and soon after it transcribes the first 20 to 40 nucleotides. 7-methylguanosine attaches in an unusual 5', prime, 5 prime linkage to the 5' prime end. This replaces the triphosphate of the initial transcript with a nucleotide in reverse 3' prime, 5' prime orientation, thus sealing the lid. This process is called capping. Caps are vital as they contribute to the stability of the mRNA by protecting the 5' prime end from degradation by 5' prime, 3' prime exonuclease and phosphatasis. They also enhance the translation of mRNA by eukaryotic protein synthesis system. The 3' prime end is generated by cleaving rather than terminating the transcript at a fixed site. Eukaryotic primary transcripts are cleaved by a specific endonuclease about 20 bases downstream from the AAU AAA signal. Now we will look at the second part of processing, modification of the 3' prime end. After cleavage, poly-A polymerase recognizes the AAU AAA signal and begins the process of polyadenylation. It adds about 200 adenylate residues to the free 3' hydroxyl end of the mRNA. The addition of a poly-A tail is very important as it protects the 3' end against degradation by 3' 5' exonuclease and it also labels the mRNA for nuclear and ribosomal recognition, helping the ribosome attach to the 5' end of the mRNA once it reaches the cytoplasm. The next vital step of RNA processing in the eukaryotic nucleus is the removal or splicing of large portions of RNA. The mRNA strand is composed of long non-coding stretches of nucleotides called introns. These are not translated. They are found wedged between protein coding segments called exons, which are eventually expressed by being translated into amino acids. The introns are cut out and the exons are joined together like cut and paste. There are different types of splicing, but we will look at spliceosome catalyzed RNA splicing which occurs in the nuclei of higher organisms. The intron begins with GU nucleotides and ends with AG. These act as signals for splicing. Particles called small nuclear ribonucleoproteins, or SNRPs, located in the nucleus recognize these splice sites. Five small nuclear ribonucleoproteins join forces with more proteins and form a structure called the spliceosome. The spliceosome interacts with certain splice sites along the intron, releasing the intron and joining together the two exons. After the completion of all modifications and processing events, the mature mRNA is exported from the nucleus to the cytoplasm. Once it has entered the cytoplasm, it is recognized by ribosomes and translated into proteins.